Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out Voltage Modular 2 and I have been absolutely blown away by this. Um, I've had the original for a while now, actually got the free version first then upgraded to the full version and then just didn't have time to really sit through, go through all the modules. Uh, I had Softube Modular at the time as well that I've been playing around a lot with. So I kind of, kind of put this on the, the back burner for a bit uh, until version 2 came out which prompted me to kind of get, uh, get into it a little bit more. And yeah, it's it's totally blown me away. Uh, one specific reason which we're going to look at now. Um, let's dive in. We're going to check this out. So aside from the um, the upgrades in version two, uh, there's a lot of UI stuff in here, which is really really cool. Just the way you can move modules around, um, move multiple cables. Everything is CV enabled. Uh, it really is like a sound designer's dream. This. Um, but I want to kind of highlight a little module that's inside that I hadn't noticed before. Uh, one of the issues that I had was uh, I didn't really like the effects that came with this. Uh, so you have to kind of go and buy extra modules. I looked at the PSP stuff, which is really good, but didn't quite have what I'm wanting. Um, especially like in the reverb and delay department. Uh, so uh, then I came across this little um, module, which we're going to look at now. So what I'm going to do is quickly just set up a, a really quick patch. Um, let's just grab a oscillator. We'll grab the. Uh, I'll just grab a vintage oscillator. We're going to grab a envelope. These have all been the GUI has been kind of updated for these. I'm going to grab an amp. Amplifier. There we go. That's pretty much all we need. Um, and let's just uh, patch this in quickly. So we pitch CV. We're going to send pitch to our vintage oscillator. Just turn this down because this does run quite hot a lot of the time. Um, we're going to run the, let's take the saw wave. We'll run that into the input of the amplifier. And you can see how just how easy it is to move this around. Um, I mean, one the other thing I liked, if you want to sort of duplicate uh, synth voices with an amp and an envelope, you can actually just hold down Alt now and just click that and the whole thing kind of creates a new version of that. With Softube, you've got to go and manually add stuff every single time. It's not nearly as user-friendly as this. Um, but yeah, okay, so you can see how quickly we're patching this in. Let's just send our amp, uh, the envelope to the amp CV input and the gates we will get from the CV sources. Uh, so we can just test this quickly. We'll just plug this into our mono input. And you can see what I said, it does run very hot. You've got to be careful of that. Let's turn this down slightly. Cool. Um, so now we're going to go and grab this little module, which is the plugin. Sorry, uh, my um, library is just off to the right side of the screen, so you won't see it. Um, but we can, uh, I'll just bring it across. It is called plugin host and this module what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to bring in vst plugins now it supports vst3 as well which is fantastic um so you might not think this is that interesting but we'll show you another little thing now so i've actually got a uh, the modules you can save as module presets the, if you select a plugin here you can load a vst3 it's not the most elegant way to load a plugin um there's no menus or anything you just grab whichever vst3 you want here and it'll load it but you can save individual presets for each module as well so what i've done is if you right click here you can go to module preset and I have a preset for Valhalla Delay in here. So we can grab that, It'll load Valhalla Delay, and you'll see it's done some other stuff here, which we're going to check out in just a sec. Uh, now we just want to patch our output from the amp into the inputs. We need both those, and we'll patch the outputs to our master out. So now what we have is our uh, setup that we have our patch that we've created inside of um, Voltage Modular uh, with effects running from a VST, an external VST plugin. And no need for buying extra modules. Now, this is great, but we can take this one step further. If you click on these little tabs, you'll see I've got a couple of controls in here. 
Uh, when you open this up, you have the CC controls for the plugin that you've loaded here. So you can go and grab any of these. Um, if you prefer, what you can do is just click View, Editor, and Learn, and grab any control, and you'll see it's assigned the mix control to this first bank here, number one. Now, what these are, are CV to MIDI converters. So you can pretty much patch any CV source that you have inside of your um, voltage modular instance and um, convert that into MIDI CC that you can control your plugins with. So what we'll do is we'll add in a, I'm just gonna grab an LFO on the other side here. We'll grab an LFO. Let's take the triangle out of our LFO and we can assign that to our mix dial. And you'll see we get some modulation happening there. I'm gonna push this down and we'll run this in unipolar mode back off on that slightly if you want but let's open up the editor and you can see our cv is now being converted to the mix uh, control inside of Valhalla delay So now we can get LFOs, we can get more complex LFOs as well if we start doing things like adding extra ones in and then we can add, say, sample and hold to our frequency CV. Uh, so we'll have sample and hold coming from this one, going to the frequency. We can sort of get quite randomized frequencies as well. Possibilities are pretty much endless. Now, I've uh, ages ago done this in Reactor as well. Reactor is a way clunkier setup than this. Uh, you can't load plugins inside of Reactor, so you've got to send MIDI out of the plugin into Cubase, reroute that MIDI into the input of your synth that you're trying to uh, control. It's a lot harder to do with plugins as well. You can't really do that with plugins. But now we're going to take a look at another instance. Um, let's delete this and we'll start another patch and this is where things get really interesting now we'll take something like repro for example so we're going to add a host C uh, plugin again and this time around you're not going to select a effects plugin we're going to go load vst3 we'll run down to uh, let's try and find Repro, there we go. I will bring that in. Now I have to, we'll check out some of the patches from my latest sound bank as well, the Repro sound bank, which has just come out called Incantations, which you can go and grab from the website, uh, murdermusic.com. That's 100 patches for Repro 1 and 5. Uh, but let's select our plugin now. There's Repro loaded up here. Obviously, we've got nothing playing yet. What we need to do is, and this is another really fantastic feature with um, Voltage Modular, is it does poly modular patches. Um, another thing which you can't do in soft tube modular. Don't get me wrong, soft tube mod modular is fantastic. Uh, the, the sonic quality of the modules in that is really, really good. Um, but it's just it's not nearly as flexible as this. Um, you can do sort of paraphonic stuff. I think there's a poly module which will send a CV switch through different um, oscillators. You have to make four oscillators to play four notes. Um, this works differently. You can just take a MIDI. You get poly modules. You can actually play up to 16 voices with. Um, but we're just going to take the MIDI out from the host, uh, plug that directly into the inputs. Now we've got MIDI, and we can just take the output from here directly to our mains, and let's just see what we get. And there we go, we've got Repro playing inside of Voltage Modular. Okay, so let's grab one of the presets from um, the bank. Let's do... We'll take a look at 
take a lead like this. Um, now, the simplicity of repro is part of the reason why I like it so much. But there are times that you might want to do something a little bit more complex and um, you run out of mod modulation slots. Uh, you have two year and then you can also assign a few things via year to um, your mod wheel and so on. Um, but what if you want to do a little bit more than that? Well, this is how you do it. You can um, say, for instance, so we've got mod wheel assigned to that. Let's say we want to add an LFO to the cutoff, um, but maybe we want to do a sample and hold instead of uh, or a glided sample and hold instead of the three wave fail forms that we have here. You do have a sample and hold in here. It's a lot. It's a bit hard to work with though because it's got to be kind of tweaked from the back here, and then you can't use the noise as a modulation source anymore. So let's do um, let's do a sample and hold setup here quickly. We'll grab a noise generator. And let's add that in. And we'll grab a sample and hold module. And we'll grab a glide module as well. Right, so we can connect up our noise to uh, the input of the sample and hold. We'll use an internal trigger for that. And we'll send the output to our glide. Dial the glide up a little bit. And the... Uh, Output of that we're going to send to slot one of our plugin host uh, module. And now what we can do is once again click over here, select learn. We'll grab the cutoff. You'll see it has now set the cutoff as the um, uh, slot there. And you can see this control will actually line up with the filter in repro. And we'll turn that down, and then we can bring in a LFO again. Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry, not using the LFO. We bring in the output from our sample and hold, and we can dial in that in. Let's bring this up. You'll notice I still have the uh, control internally from the mod wheel playing there as well. So let's turn this one up a little bit more. But we additionally, we have that sample and hold uh, modulation going on. We'll turn up the rate as well. Fantastic. I love it, man. This is uh, its such a cool thing to be able to add in all this uh, extra modulation and bring everything together. And there's really no limits to what you can do with this. Uh, you can be bringing in uh, sounds and triggering, triggering them with uh, sort of like these Euclidean sequences. This is one that you should probably buy extra if uh, you do grab a copy. Um, this is one on my list of modules to buy. It's an incredible module, this. Um, and you can start triggering your own VSTs with this. And then when you're inside a Cubase as well, obviously everything here uh, will sync up to your DAW's clock. You can do manual automation from there as well. It really is. It's just like a sound designer's dream, this. Um, I mean, you could really go completely insane with this and bring in another plugin host like this and then grab a plugin for example like um uh, down at the bottom we're gonna grab biome so you can have your modular patches uh being rooted into uh, this modular effects system. Uh, coincidentally, actually, Michael Hetrick, who the designer of Biome, has a number of um, modules as well, a couple of shaper modules, some really cool 
maths and uh, logic functions and stuff, uh, which are worth checking out as well. But you can just see how complex you can get with this. Uh, you know, doing a complex patch, then routing that into a complex modular effects unit like this. And um, you can actually get the controls in this plugin host to match up with the macro controls. So if you go here, we can actually convert CV from inside of voltage modular into the macro controls inside of unfiltered audio and then route those to um, various um, various inputs inside your uh, effects patch that you build up. So effectively you can sort of sync, I mean you do have a, a vast amount of modulation sources here too, but you can sync these up with uh, modulation sources inside of your patches that you're working on. So yeah, really, really incredible. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be doing uh, a lot more videos around this. Uh, I've been having the best time playing around with this today. It's really, really incredible piece of software. It's actually not that expensive for the base um, uh, the base package. I would actually get the full version, though. There's a couple of things that you're going to want in there. Um, and then the store, they're very reasonably priced, the modules as well. There's a couple of fantastic um, banks, uh, 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 bundles that you can grab. Although if you do start going nuts, uh, you could spend a couple of thousand dollars on uh, bundles quite easily. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's it's really, really clever. This I'll just grab a patch that um, I just finished using these uh, Euclidean presets, oh, these Euclidean sequences. Uh, I'm not going to save that. Okay, there's no um, gates in this, but the pitch works. So these are four Euclidean sequences or two modules. They each have two, um, basically triggering and moving around, getting you like really random um, rhythms. And these are triggering the four oscillators down at the bottom. We'll sort of bring these in slowly. You can take a listen. Dial in some delay. Let's bring in the second one. has actually been derived from a arpeggio module so we can play this Love it, love it, love it. Uh, definitely go and grab this uh, super piece of software with this. Great, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll be back with more of this soon. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to do the notifications thing so that you stay in touch with us uh, when we put out new content or live streams and so on. Um, also, make sure you go check out the new bank at marulamusic.com. It's called Incantations for UHE Repro. 50 presets for Repro 1 and 50 for Repro 5. I will catch you guys again soon. Stay safe. See you then.